Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're gonna talk about fluid velocity. When we're talking about fluid velocity, we need two important concepts. One of them is volume of a cylinder, and I've talked about volume of cylinders in a previous video. But just as a review, the volume can be calculated by taking pi, which is approximately 3.14 or 3.1416, or you may use the pi function on your calculator. You take that special number and you multiply by the radius squared, and then you multiply by the height of the cylinder. And that, if your dimensions are in inches, that will give you volume in cubic inches. The other thing that we're going to use is the fact that there are approximately 231 cubic inches in a US gallon. When we're working with pump capacity, it will be expressed in gallons per minute, and that means American gallons per minute. So using this information, there are three different types of questions that you might be asked regarding fluid velocity. So let's take a look at them. The first one asks us to find the capacity of a pump that causes fluid to move at a speed of 15 feet per minute through a five inch diameter pipe. So the key here is finding the volume in cubic inches, and it will be per minute and then changing that to gallons. We have a problem because this is in inches and this is in feet, so we need to change everything to inches. So 15 feet per minute, if we multiply by 12, that gives us 180 inches per minute. Now I'm gonna do this question putting all of the units in so that you can see how they all work out, but when you're doing it, as long as you understand what the units need to be, you don't have to put them in your formula because it might look more confusing. So we plug everything into our volume formula. If the diameter is five inches, that means that the radius is two and a half inches. So the radius will be 2.5 inches and we're squaring that. Now, if the fluid is moving at 15 feet per minute, we think of that as the height. It really isn't going to be the length or the height of that pipe. It's how far that fluid will travel in a minute of operation. So the length or the height of that pipe would need to be 180 inches to hold all of the fluid that's pumped in one minute. So it's not really the height of the pipe, but we think about it as height in terms of our formula. So there's a total distance or height of 180 per minute. So here this gives us square inches times inches gives us cubic inches and our time factor is per minute. So we're going to end up with cubic inches per minute as an answer. So we multiply pi times 2.5 times 2.5 times 180 and we get 3,534.3 cubic inches per minute. We want the capacity of the pump, which is given in gallons per minute. When you're asked for pump capacity, it refers to gallons per minute. Now I want to change from cubic inches per minute to gallons per minute. There's different ways that I can do it. In my previous video, I showed how to use direct proportion to change from volume to capacity and capacity to volume units. But in this case, when we're working with pump capacity, we're always working with the same interrelationship, which is 231 cubic inches in a US gallon. So you can use proportion to change. You could simply divide by 231, or you could use a process called dimensional analysis. The way that we use dimensional analysis is we deal with our units, our dimensions. So I wanna change from cubic inches to gallons. I wanna keep the per minute. So I need to know what is equivalent here. I know that one gallon is 231 cubic inches. So because those are equal, I'm not changing the value. I'm multiplying by a value of one, which doesn't change the value. And this allows me to cancel the cubic inches and replace with gallons per minute. So my result will be 15.3 gallons per minute. If you find that this is confusing, then simply Take this and divide by 231. From now on, I'm not going to put my units in the formula and you might find that easier as well. This is probably the most 
common question you're going to encounter with fluid velocity, where you're asked to find the discharge velocity when you know the pump capacity and you know the pipe size. So again, we're going to be using our volume formula. But the biggest thing is the units. So 100 gallons per minute. Gallons is not a volume unit, it's a capacity unit. So we need to change that to cubic inches. So 100 gallons would be equivalent to 23,100 cubic inches. And we're, we're dealing with the time factor per minute. So that's the volume of fluid that's flowing through that pipe in one minute of operation. So we're going to put that in for volume. 23,100 will equal pi times, the diameter is four inches, which is we want it to be in inches. Our radius is half of that, so our radius is two inches, so we put two in for radius. And we're finding the discharge velocity. We're not really finding the height, but in order to find the discharge velocity, we think of it as being height. What total length would that pipe need to be to hold the fluid that's discharged in a minute of operation of that pump? So we think of it as height, even though it truly isn't really a height of the pipe, but it's the distance that that fluid will travel, which would be the same as what the length or the height of the pipe would have to be to hold the discharge in a minute of operation. So that's what we're gonna find. We're gonna isolate height by taking 23,100 and dividing by whatever pi times two squared is equal to. And we get 1,838. Because this is cubic inches and our radius is in inches, this is in inches. And we know it's inches per minute because this is gallons per minute. So this would, the discharge velocity will be 1,838 inches per minute. But that's not usually the unit that discharge velocity is expressed in. Usually it's either feet per minute or feet per second. Let's do one thing at a time. Let's change inches to feet. And the way that we do that is we divide by 12. We get 153.2 feet per minute. You can probably leave it in that form, but if you were required to change it to feet per second, then you're gonna do another calculation or another conversion. You're gonna divide by 60. And we get 2.55 feet per second. So either of these would be acceptable. This is the typical fluid velocity question you're going to encounter. If you need to refer to a chart like this one, which tells you the flow of water through Schedule 40 steel pipe, you can look up 100 gallons per minute through a four inch diameter pipe on this chart. And it's just a matter of finding that value on here. This chart gives us two pieces of information if we know the capacity of the pump and the diameter of the pipe. It tells us the fluid velocity in feet per second. It also tells us the pressure drop in 100 feet of pipe. If I were to look up 100 gallons per minute through a four inch pipe, we would see that the velocity is 2.52 feet per second. It's not exactly the same as what I obtained. What you have to understand is what we're doing is what it should be in theory. What they've done to get the values on this chart is they've actually set up a 100 gallon per minute pump through a four inch diameter pipe and they've measured what the actual velocity is. So of course it's gonna be a little bit less than the theoretical. So, you know, if you see a difference like that and you wonder why, it's because this is what it is theoretically and this is what it is in reality. Let's look at one last type of question you might encounter. In this last example, we're asked to find the diameter. Well, our formula doesn't have diameter, it has radius. So what we're gonna do is find the radius and then we'll find the diameter. So we've got a 10 gallon per minute pump. We're going to change that. Remember, it's all about the units. So 10 gallons per minute, we're gonna multiply by 231 and that will give us 2,310 cubic inches per minute. 20 feet per minute would be like the height 
and we can't work with feet if our other dimensions are in inches. So we're going to multiply by 12 and that will give us 240 inches per minute. So the only unknown is our radius. We plug in 2310 for volume and 240 for height. In order to solve for radius, I need to find radius squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to either multiply pi times 240 and then divide both sides by that, or I divide by pi and then I divide by 240. Whichever method you use, you should get r squared equals 3.06. Anytime you're solving for an unknown, you have to do the opposite operation. So if I want to know what r is equal to when I know r squared, I have to take the square root. So I take the square root of this side, and I take the square root of this side. The square root of r squared is just r. The square root of 3.06 is 1.75. Once I have the radius, I simply double that to get the diameter. So the diameter will be 2 times 1.75, so the diameter will be 3.5 inches. So this one's a little trickier because we have a power involved, but just go through step by step, and when you get the r squared isolated, then you take the square root, and then you can find diameter. Understand the different types of questions that you can be asked. The key is making sure all of your units are consistent and those units should be cubic inches or inches.